Hello guys and welcome back to Tyranny. It's been a little while since I recorded, but uh, we're all good to go for a little bit, at least one session. <laughs> Times have been busy, but getting around to this, been curious to see where this all goes, really. Uh, and also very curious to experiment more with the magic system, which truly has me excited, <laughs> which doesn't happen so often. So let's explore the camp, shall we? Because uh, I assume we're going to have lots of people to talk to, trade with, etc. Um, his favorite insignia has been defaced. Yes, that seems about right. Tables lined with various medicinal herbs. That text goes so fast. It appears that they have been carefully rationed. Carefully skinned game. Hang... Yeah, hang from this branch. They appear sickly and malnourished. Sorry, I'm gonna go quickly into tooltip delay. It's not quite tooltip delay. It's like how long the text box stays. It's very different. <laughs> uh, yeah, it can't be. Nah, there's just seemingly no option for it. I guess I'll just keep clicking on it. <laughs> that's that, that's fine. Who are you? Just a normal stone shield. Not named. I assume you don't say much. Yeah, just making your rounds. Seems about right. But did we just automatically unlock that? Is that what happened? Because I'm not sure it should be. Yeah, seemingly we did. I'm not sure that's good for our reputation. But um, okay, we'll take water. They don't seem to kick us out for it. So we have bitter quip. It's uh, a chest next to him with some reg regular fruit. Okay. Can't do that. Yeah, you can. Okay, so we have a resting icon, seemingly. So I think it's time to go talk to uh, bitter quip. <laughs> it's a funny name. And let's go for Pentabor and Rona. They seem like the first ones you're supposed to meet. Don't shield boots. That's a lot better than what we have. So how about we equip that immediately? Let's get in the habit. Will cool. Do. Hello, Pentabor. Hail to you, guardian of the law. The man dressed in merchant finery greets you with a smile. If you have a few excess rings weighing you down, best unburden yourself before battle. Battle, we're just gonna go try and convince some fire ups. But okay. So a lot of things that we are definitely not. Uh, how come, how did you come to work for the disfavored? Sorry, I skipped some dialogue there. You know that if the disfavored suffer a merchant in their camp, that must be a man selling only the finest provisions and armaments. He points to his collection of shields, rations, satchels, wineskins, and other sundries. Take a look and see if something interests you. Hard work and good suppliers. When Tunan's men came to my village, all the merchants were given different lists of what they were and weren't permitted to trade. He smiles, hand on hip. In Kairos' wisdom, my record must have been a good one because I was given the right to trade in all manner of goods. Most importantly, arms. Not a lot of merchants can legally sell weapons. It was like that even before Kairos. Pentabur rubs his hands, eyes alight. Let's see if we can find something you might like. But I think we're absolutely broke, so... Don't think there's much we can do other than maybe sell some of our old items. Bronze sword, javelin. So will this actually show? Yeah, you already know the sigil. That's what I was wondering if it will tell us that. That's, uh, that's convenient. Okay, so that can go. I'm not sure what else we would really need at this point or how useful all these like having fruit or fish to get the stat bonus like 
in my opinion, or my opinion, the way I tend to play these games is I don't deal with such items. I just don't end up using them because I'm not like such a min maxer. So I, I, I don't know. I don't foresee myself using them. Plus one might. For 10 minutes. I mean, 10 minutes is actually pretty good duration, to be fair. <laughs> that can't really complain about that. So also, if I'm seeing this right, it's worth 20. Well, 20 copper, let's say. Yeah, copper. But then if you buy five, or he has five, and he's selling it for 50, I'm still not entirely sure how to... Because this is, should be the price, and this is how many he has. So he has 10 beers. 10 stout. But he's selling it for 50, even though... Well, I guess this is like what we know. This is the what the price should be worth. So let's just sell those items. Don't think we need this. I mean, maybe we do. Maybe we... There you go. Now we have some money. And we'll just leave you be. What about Rona? Got no time to chitter. Too much armor to mend. Speak to Uncle Pentabor. Okay. Arrows are fletched with precision and care. Barak. You can make out the ironclad soldier's expression under the twisted helmet. He merely stares at you. Okay. Wood used for these parapets is pristine and finely cut. These walls have yet to see any battle. Okay. So we can just steal a short bow. I mean, okay. If we can just literally do that. A crescent runner. Itching to get to the back, to get back on the battlefield. Okay. Isotanis. Seems like a smith of some sort. Sorry, I can't. Not a crushing runner, stone shield, stone shield, okay. There's nothing else seemingly hidden around these corners. Ah, so that we can't unlock. I see. Hello, Isotanis. Isotanis curses the air as a blade of thin iron breaks in half beneath his hammer. Repairing weapons with scrap isn't exactly why I got into this craft, but our supplies are spent. He wipes the sweat from his brow and gets a better look at you. Why not forge bronze? Bronze will do in a pinch, don't get me wrong. It can take a beating and get bent back into shape, unlike the stubborn iron we have here. He glances at a pile of his work with dread. And we always have plenty of tin and copper laying around, so supplies aren't a problem. It's a rare smith who can churn out military-grade bronze consistently. More often than not, it comes out soft. Look around camp, we're garbing the legion head to toe in iron because it's cheaper and easier to produce for the masses. Couldn't do that with bronze. They called it his favorite, the Iron Legion, for a reason. Strategy and skill may be our backbone, but our claws are made of iron. The good stuff that comes from the smiths in Lethian, Lethian's Crossing. You mentioned an iron shortage? I'm afraid so. The last shipment sent down to the Matani went missing near Echo Call Crossing. And I'm afraid we won't be seeing any more now that the valley is sealed. Forgebound iron is Tunon's responsibility. Why is this the first I'm hearing of it? Keep, keep your voice down. Isotanus flinches and lowers his own. Graven Ash doesn't want to cause a panic or pass any information to the vendor in guard. Best case scenario, the iron tumbled off a boat and is rusting on a riverbed. Worst case, it ends up in enemy hands. Uh, if I find myself an echo call, I suppose I can keep an eye out. I appreciate that, as does the great general, more than you might guess. Maybe he isn't quick to offer his thanks to outsiders, but I know he'll be grateful for your help. It would be a boon to the war effort if Iron was recovered. 
no, I think we just gained favor. Like, you can just trust me to help. I mean, we're still helping the war effort, right? I knew that Tunan wouldn't have dispatched you without good reason. The court isn't exactly known for gambling when the stakes are high. He glanced to a crate beside him and points to a small set of notches on the wood. You, you see that? That is how we tell apart our iron shipments from the rest. Inconspicuous, so people don't go snooping around. You want to keep your eye out for these. Good hunting. So, because we were a guild apprentice, are you familiar with the forge-bound art? Mage Smith swore into Kairos' service, though their operations in the tiers are overseen. Yeah, right. Quick reminder for myself. Not in the least. The Forgebound are artists who work in metal rather than paint. They conjure flames that burn hot enough to melt the metal from rocks. Me? I swing a hammer and hope that Ash's protection extends to my thumb whenever I miss. <laughs> I like him. He seems nice. <laughs> Normal human being. Uh, okay, so this seems like a, a fine quality instead of a common item or level of equipment. So I guess we don't need any sort of shield like that. So this is heavy iron, heavy armor, an earth shaker staff. That's very expensive by the way. <laughs> okay, good to know. But again, it has a lot of recovery, which I think is not something that you want, because you want low recovery so you can attack faster. That's that's the whole idea, right? I'm just looking how this dagger compares to the one that she has. It's worse. Yeah, it's definitely worse. Gut Seeker is 4.85... 85 DPS too, yeah. And recovery plus 25. And this has recovery 05, 0 0.5. That's that's a big difference over time. <laughs> Does he have other items? No, these, these are the items. I didn't see a scroll bar, but just checking. So this is how... Sorry, I can't. Fresh straw in the corner of the prison cell absorbs much of the stench, but not all of it. <laughs> okay, then I think it's about time to talk to a bit equip. I'm just wondering if I should try and unlock this next to him. I think it's weird, but... Glory to the voices of Nerat, projecting his salutations for all to hear. The grinning blood chanter gra wraps his staff against the ground as you approach. Fate binder eterna, I presume. His smile quickly retreats, giving way to a sour scowl. I am Bitter Quip. I am here as the emissary of the Scarlet Horus. Bitter Quip looks at you impatiently. Well, I don't know why we'd, you know asking this but okay what is it like working with the disfavored he scoffs looking away from you for a moment before sniffing and returning his attention to you reporting to the iron hag is an insult she fought one duel for her title one her leadership must be continuously proven earned and defended weakness should bleed to the bottom of the army not rise from the top or rise to the top my assignment here is also an insult but one I will bear for the good of the chorus. But a quip sniffs the air, smiling with one side of his mouth. If only to see with my own eyes the failure of the disfavored. That will be a fine day. So, can you tell me of the Scarlet Chorus? Of course he has more to say about the chorus because that's his faction. <laughs> uh, the chorus is the future of the tears. I feel only derision and pity for those who fear our inevitable ascension. Bitter Quip look at you with a raised eyebrow. What in particular would you like to know? Uh, what is your role? I'm a blood chanter. My magic can turn the will of man and the tide of battle. I have held command for three years now. Though being forced to keep an eye on the disfavored is not the reward I had envisioned from my service thus far. Sounds like you really like the voices of Nerad. Bitter Quip blinks several times and scowls. Saying nothing. 
Okay. Uh, tell me about the voices of Nerod. He's supreme commander and public servant. He who set us free, but directs all. Bitterquip smiles as he talks, his face turning flush. The voices of Nerod is the epitome of what each of us can be. A magician without equal and the leader of uncountable numbers. Okay, well, I think that's kind of enough. That's all. And he just nods. Okay, so let's unlock this. I keep a torsion wrench handy. So we both got subterfuge plus one from that. Well, that's, that's cool. That's a sigil of strength. No more powerful spells, I presume. Fatiguing toxins. But it get weakened. How would we give that to her? Right. Okay. Uh, well, first of all, let's uh, learn this. Scroll contains a magical accent which slightly increases the strength of a spell. Awesome. But I think we are already... I'm lore plus one. That's actually... That part is actually important. So, we have Lucia and Marcus here. I'm Lucia. This is Marcus. That's a funny thing to say, but okay. Uh, did his favorite soldier points to the armored man next to her and you must be the fate binder from under her helmet you hear an audible scoff we've been assigned to babies assigned to your hospitality marcus quickly interjects while you remain on this favored ground if you should need a place to rest we can make the necessary rep preparations what can we do for you uh well, Marcus, tell me about yourself. You seem to like to talk more and are a little bit more friendly. Or mannered, I should say. <laughs> Not sure there's much to tell. I trained at Fort Resolution. This is my first campaign and I'm proud to be with the Legion. I was wounded at the Gates of Judgment, but Graven Ash's protection mended me good. I owe my life to him. Are you bragging that you let your guard down and took a spear to the gut? You really shouldn't boast about a filthy tearsman besting you in battle. Lucia rolls her eyes. You're just bitter that Lord Ash never seems to notice you. In all seriousness, I would take that spear again if it brought honor to the disfavored. Kairos knows we could use it. We are the elite fighters of the Northern Army, but somehow we still lack the Overlord's confidence. He shakes his head and sighs. It's uh, interesting that you can ask them for uh, for training. Uh, but Lucia, tell me about yourself. I do this. She unenthusiastically lifts up her heavy shield, and I do this. She mockingly stabs at the air with her spear. Playing host is not my strong suit. Ignore my sarcasm. I've seen the Legion through my share of the campaign. After so much bloodshed, our pretense of honor can wear me down. She turns her cautious eye your way. The North is my home, and I consider each and every one of the ironclad bastards in this camp to be family. You won't find another army where each member of the Phalanx is as beloved and cherished as the next. Though so you seem handy with a weapon, Lucia. Insufficient reputation. I know a thing or two about the spitting foes who are stupid enough to challenge me. What of it? I wonder if that's where we could have recruited her? Is that what that is? So... Basically, they seem to be focusing on the difference between, you know, her skill and his inability, basically. Um, so what if we ask her for some training? Finally, some fun to break up the monotony of the siege. Ah, so you can train dodge and athletics. Huh. Interesting. Not sure we need that, but let's go for 10 and 20. How about that? Because <laughs> I assume athletics are important. But I really didn't realize you could just spend money to train skills. What about Marcus? Yeah, he has different skills. That makes sense. Okay, interesting. So I think it is time that we go inside, but then I revealed 
something hidden here. Interesting. Which contains some pollen <laughs> and two gems. Okay. Well, I mean, I'll take it. Oh, I forgot a bag laying there as well. Which has a whetstone and some raw meat. Lovely. Okay. Taking a quick sip of coffee. Okay. I think I'm ready. Let's see what happens. Nothing good, probably. <laughs> I assume this is just dialogue that will just keep going on. So let's see who we have. We have Fifth Eye. We have Iron Marshal Arenios. And then Graven Ash and the voices of Nera themselves. That's four reports of avalanches in the mountains now. The Tearsmen can barely count past nine. They have neither the capacity nor the cause to close off the mountain passes. Either way, that leaves the second and fourth cohort trapped outside the valley. The Archon of War pounds his staff on the ground to punctuate his words. A large and imposing man to begin with. His profile is made larger still by his hulking suit of armor that hums with mystic energy. Or it's the work of your perfidious Earthshakers. Only a fool would not suspect a traitorous archon of poisoning the mind of his students with sedition. We would have killed the Earthshakers Guild for their master's treachery. But I'm sure you have some perfectly valid reason for allowing them to live as your pawns. The Archon of Secrets passes a scepter between his hands as he speaks, twirling the rod in hypnotic circles. You hear the voices in your head. Well, hello, Fatebinder. We'll be with you in just a moment. So by his twirling of a rod, he's speaking to us. That is uh, a guy of secrets, I would say, yes. Uh, emerald luminescence seeps from the seams of the Archon's ragged red robes. The glow is most noticeable where his neck ought to be. His mask seems to float and spin, never pivoting or bending naturally. I must say, the writing in this is really engaging. It's really well done. It's intriguing. You, it, make, it makes me at least want to like read more. Hey, watch yourself. When these two get going, you don't want to get between them. Well, you know, he indicated that we'll be with you in a moment. So I think we just remain silent. They know we're here. I always know you've run out of things to say when you resort to mocking my vassals. If we are to speak of treachery, why is it that my scouts see the Scarlet Chorus warriors defecting back to the Vendrian Guard? Your fearsome reputation has gone flaccid, for it seems you cannot control your soldiers, or perhaps you simply choose not to. To Iron Marshal Arrhenius, my lords, the Fate Binder has arrived. The disfavored commander raises her voice, trying with little success to speak over the Archons. Perhaps we could table this discussion and let our guests speak. Speaking of strategic failures, who was it that insisted the valley would need only a token garrison? Hmm? For some strange reason, we can't seem to recall which balding half would grossly underestimated the enemy. Thoughts? The Archon of Secrets twirls his scepter in a twisting loop, his leather-wrapped hands flipping the heavy rod with an effortless flow. Hear the voices in your head. Can you hear us, Fatebinder? Cough if we have your attention. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Uh, so I think we just cough. Cough audibly. And I thought you had left agents within these tearsmen when they surrendered. Either you failed to see this coming, or you knew and let it happen. Incompetent or in cahoots, either way, this mess has your filthy stink all over it. The Archon of War lurches forward, resting his weight on his warm mouth as blue luminescence 
crackles around his armor. We look forward to seeing you explain to Tunan why the Archon of War could not close the vice on this trivial little insurgency. When we are crowned the ruler of the tears, we shall have this place renamed to Ashes Folly in your honor. The voices of Nera tosses his scepter into the air, catching it as it descends back down. I'm really just curious, like, if we don't have enough perception or lore or probably one of these statistics, because this is lore bound, I think. That's the way it was described at the beginning. Um, that, yeah, you might just not get it. And I'm just curious what the dialogue would, would you know, reflect. What would we observe? Like, he's just throwing his thing, you know, his scepter around randomly. Is that how it would then show? Because that's really cool then, the fact that they added an additional way of communication during dialogue with one of the characters. Like, that's really cool to me. I've never seen something like that done. Mm. Oh, yeah, good, good. Now pay attention, you might miss something. Okay, so remain silent. If I could trust the information I get from you and your conscripted mouth breathers, perhaps I'd order my cohorts around a bit more aggressively. But last time I trusted your all-clear report, my troops failed to come home. Oh, Ash, old boy. If you're going to have a little sob every time one of your nieces or nephews dies to the tearsmen, perhaps we should have Siren sing you some calming lullabies to help you cope with your grief. Who is Siren? Siren is the Archon of Song. And the youngest Archon sent to conquer the tears. Young and inexperienced, Siren is soaring to the voices of Nerat, who uses her powers of charm and manipulation to swell the ranks of the Car Scarlet Chorus with volunteers. So he's flipping a scepter. Take care that you don't learn too much, Fatebinder. An excess of knowledge, of curiosity even, can earn unwanted attention. Ah, the marshal then speaks. Hold your tongue. I will not have you denigrate the honor of our fallen brethren. The commander's hand moves to the hilt of her blade, though the weapon stays sheathed. I'd be doing us all a favor if I cracked open that excuse for a head. They bicker like children, do they not? The fifth eye, grating tenor, pierces the tension in the tent, and all eyes land on the crimson spear. I, uh... Not only to say welcome, welcome to our guest, the Fate Binder. The armored retainer bows with rushed inelegance, then rises to a salute, and not a moment too soon. So we gained favor with both of them because we didn't, you know, uh, interrupt them. So bow to the Archons. Apologies for the sudden entrance. I've traveled long to be here. Yeah, I think that's, you know, being polite. Ah, the fire starter has arrived. Welcome, welcome. Our agents tell us such lovely stories of what you did at the Vellum Citadel. Have you come bearing another fragment of Kairos's wrath in tow? The fire starter. Yeah, because it's a conquest decision because we did that. Yes, okay. We were worried you'd never make it. So glad that Drastus' demise didn't cause further delay. The Archon of Secrets turns his attention to you. The frozen Rictus, fashioned into his bronze mask, greets you with a permanent smile. Doesn't look like a smile to me if I look there, but okay. Uh, how did you know about... I don't think we should question how he knows stuff, because he is, you know, the Archon of Secrets. I'm sure he has informants. <laughs> Lots of them, <laughs> everywhere. Uh, I have come bearing an edict. I think we should just be straightforward. We shouldn't be rude to them, I think. <laughs> so if we say, are we all done? Are you all done bickering? Then the voice of Nerat likes it and Graven Ash doesn't. <laughs> okay, no, I think we... Ah, okay, fine, I'll do that. Are you all just done bickering? 
My dear Binder, we won't be done bickering until the last of Ash's hair falls out. We'll pause for you to read your little missive. Go on, go on, don't keep us all in suspense. He already knows exactly what's written there, doesn't he? Once again, you bring us support in a time of need. We fondly remember your service to the Chorus in the taking of the Bastard City. We knew back then you were destined for great things. But we had not anticipated you would be twice honored with the task of proclamation. So, do not keep us waiting. What is the Overlord's will? Okay, so let's see. The Overlord's loyal servants must hold Ascension Hall by Kairos' day, Day of Swords, or all in the valley shall perish. It seems you need to need some encouragement to work together. Kairos' edict will end the lives of everyone in this valley unless Ascension Hall is claimed. So it's just the wording that we can change to get favor or not. In honor of your incompetence and disarray. <laughs> I really enjoy these uh, like more voices of Nerat chorus lines, which are just like bordering rude and chaotic. That's just fantastic. Um, in honor of your incompetence and dis disarray, the edict will execute every living thing in this valley unless Ascension Hall is taken by Kairos' Day of Swords. The earth sways with each word you utter, the air thickening with warmth as you pronounce the, ter the tersely phrased commandment. It's every syllable drafted by the hand of Kairos. With the edict proclaimed, your pulse quickens and the muscles in your legs Worn from a long trip down the mountain, feel renewed. The tired limbs now nearly buoyantly, now nearly buoyant with vigor. The Overlord means to compel us into action. No doubt the avalanches in the mountains are part of this ultimatum. We must conquer the Oathbreakers or die in failure. There is no room for error and no other way out of this valley alive. We'll need to advance across the Matani. We lose everything if we stand still. And we move to back up Plan Green. The Earthshakers didn't make it over the mountain in time. So we do this the hard way. Over the walls, instead of through. The Archon of War taps a finger against his temple. A low rumble escapes from under his beard. So, you found your backbone at last! Oh, we were worried past humiliations would make you soft, timid. That was a record for you, right? The baker's dozen lost in one sortie. If you had waited for the chorus reinforcements, maybe we'd have eyes and ears on the matter. So, what is he indicating to us? <clears throat> Watch him squirm, so many tears over replaceable, expendable, useless soldiers. I miss the old Archon of War. You'd never see blood echo in a blubbering mess over a few dead killers. He'd use the knuckle bones of his best disciplines or best disciples for jewelry and even made a breastplate out of his dead brother's ribcage because that's how a real man deals with grief. <laughs> yeah, that seems completely natural. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's see. Are you too daft? It is your indecision and bickering that necessitated this edict. Yeah, kinda. Daft? Only fools hate their lives enough to insult our intellect. But our dear Binder, your invective is not without purpose. Each moment we waste, death by edict draws closer. Graven Ash, we leave you to tackle the river. The chorus will scour the outer valley. So that is what it takes to get you to agree to a plan of action. The threat of death? You place the Overlord in this position with your incessant arguments, but now we've actually agreed to do something. Kairos be praised. One, one thing I kind of dislike a little about this interface is the fact that there's so many like 
name, gain, minor wrath or minor favor or average wrath, all of this. Like it all blends together in a bit of a mess and it's a little difficult to, you know, like figure out which is which. I'm not sure how you would improve that necessarily. Maybe like with an icon at the end of it, like with a symbol up or down or something like that. Um, Because they bicker like children. Now go solve this problem you've started. No more sitting idle. Also seems fine. Yeah, no more sitting idle. And they need to act first, apparently, because we need to cross a river. Uh, so yeah, no more sitting idle. Expect you to... I uh, expected his favor to be on the march at once. You delivered your edict. Do not pretend it gives you the right to give orders to an Archon. My lord, Barg and his band have been drilled on the Echo Call assault plan. The Crescent Runners should be briefing him as we speak regarding the latest enemy movements along the river. I will dispatch him at once. The Iron Marshal salutes, clapping her gauntlet to her breastplate. And I will ensure that the chorus stands ready to march. If the disfavored can take the river, the chorus is the manpower to secure the outer ring of the valley. Our soldiers clamor for battle, and at last we shall have it. Verse, we command you to continue guarding the Fate Binder. Tunan's chosen is our honored guest, and must be shown our finest hospitality. I won't let you down, boss. He'll get through the campaign in one piece, as long as he doesn't do anything too stupid. The Archon twirls his scepter one last time, then taps the fifth eye on the shoulder, and the two depart. Suit yourself, Fatebinder. The more you ignore us. What? What What did I do? That seems like a hostile message, no? Suit yourself. The more you ignore us. Huh, I'm not sure what to make of that. Finally, the fool and his puppet are gone. Perhaps now I can hear myself think. Rarely do I question Kairos' judgment. But I will never understand why the voices of Narat is given such authority. I shudder to think what will become of us all should Tunon favor him in the end. Though the edict threatens the Scarlet Chorus just as it threatens us, I cannot shake the feeling that our allies will work against us. Now, if you'll leave me be, I have a battle to plan. I imagine duty requires you speak with the chorus further. But if I can convince you to lend a hand, most of my legion is trapped beyond the mountains, so I'm in need of an added sword or two. If you wish to be counted amongst the glorious, speak with the Iron Marshal. She will direct the order of battle until we are ready for the final push into the Citadel. So this sounds like... You can choose which scenario you want to take part in. Either the river assault or the securing the, you know, the rest of the valley afterwards. Um, and glare silently. I'm not sure I necessarily want to help. And what of the Scarlet Chorus? How will they be helping? I ask myself that question often. While we take the river crossing, the Scarlet Chorus should be using their sizable presence to remove the Oathbreaker patrols lurking in the outer valley. Well, I think just glare silently because I don't necessarily want to do this because I want to be more on the Chorus side. The Iron Marshal salutes Graven Ash and then turns to leave the tent. I will be at the training grounds, readying the soldiers Find me there when you're ready. She pauses, clearing her throat. And though I am loath to mention it, the chorus can likely use your assistance. They certainly won't secure the outer valley on their own. Fifth Eye will be somewhere in that rat's nest they call a camp due east. Seek him out if you must. Sounds like we need to go to the chorus camp then, right? And now talking with companions. Well, we already did that, but okay. <laughs> I guess now we're supposed to. 
Uh, once a companion joins your party, you can talk to them at any time by selecting the conversation icon on their portrait. So we get different new quests, okay? Uh, each will, each companion who joins you will have an important information about the world of Tarotus and their own opinion on the factions and situations you encounter. Knowing how they feel about events will allow you to make choices that build your reputation with each companion. Companions will also interject their opinion into conversations you're having with other characters. How you respond to their statements will alter your reputation with the companion and others in the party. Yes. Oh, should we really just try and steal stuff next to Graven Ash? Apparently. <laughs> okay, but I mean, if he's okay with it, I'm okay with it. She has boots. She has barely got any boots. Okay, then she'll have boots. This battle report from Echo Call Crossing blames the failure of the assault on the village on the Scarlet Chorus. Apparently, their scouts failed to report the critical information about the enemy composition. Ah, so now there's Sevius there as well. Uh, okay, so I'm glad I remembered the shortcut J. So I was thinking this, yeah, it gives us two options basically. I'd completed quests, yes. So either we can go to how we should approach, speak with Iron Marshal, how you should approach the battle, okay? Or. You learned that the Scarlet Cross has an ongoing operation in Trip Nettle, which hasn't proven successful. Speak with the Fifth Eye. See what you can do to assist. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's talk to Sevius. By Kyra's Iron Anus, it's the fire start. And the swine finks in the chorus told me you were a pile of ash. The massive soldier advances, arms spread to grapple you in an embrace. So we automatically gain major favor. Okay. Um, sure, Graven Ash protects. Sevius latching his arms around your body. Sevius lifts you into the air with his embrace. The North never forgets a friend in need. He places you back down as he effortlessly as effortlessly as he scooped you into the air, letting out a soft chuckle. Our little camp is overrun with these southern lepers that the voices adopts along the way. Savius looks out towards the brace of choirmen littering, loitering by the edge of the camp. Probably half of them were the fuckers we didn't kill the first time through this valley. Troubling thought. Raven Ash doesn't tell me everything, but I know you're here on official court business. Iron Marshal's running the logistics on this one. I'm just playing slave driver and making sure the patrols stay on schedule. What is it you need? Um, yeah, I, over I overheard you asking the that earth shaker where their reinforcements have gone. Is there a problem? I am afraid so. Radix, the head of the earth shakers, was supposed to arrive with a group of his most competent spell slingers to help break this stalemate. I don't know what's holding up their arrival, and that worries me. If you were all inclined to lend a hand, we could use some arcane support on our side. Um, as a guild apprentice, have you checked any caches of confiscated lore? If only our work was that easy. At the Archon of War's behest, we make a bonfire of any illicit tomes or scrolls we might confiscate. At least those that don't slip through our fingers from time to time. The likelihood of finding our missing mages nestled among a stack of parchment is slim. Um, I could lend a hand. I mean... The northern clearing is now unlocked on the map. Could you? I knew that Tunon's agent wouldn't fail us in a time of need. I'll mark the last known site of our Earthshaker reinforcement on your map. Good hunting, Fatebinder. Okay, very well. So, got a side quest. Earthshaker reinforcements, yes. 
And yeah, this side quest is for Echo Call Crossing, so I'm just wondering that we should really go there. Um, let's see if he is the Iron Marshal's hanging out somewhere. Because if we need to talk to him, we need to talk to him, right? There he is. Don't just coddle the impact. Push back with your shield. Take the momentum. Iron Marshal Arenios, field commander of the disfavored, pounds her fist into the air as she calls out to the warriors on the training field. I set eyes on your opponent's waistline. If you spend more than a glance checking his footwork, you've lost. The disfavored offer turns to you, adjusting her pale golden surcoat as she clears her, her throat. Need to stay on top of the troops or their skills will rust. It's for their own good, even if they don't believe it. Judging from her uniform, this is the Iron Marshal Arrhenios, first among equals in the Iron Guard, Graven Ash's inner circle of trusted followers. Charged with being the, with the duties of leadership, logistics, and training, there is rarely a quiet day for the second in command of the disfavored legion. Um, it was mentioned you're short on warriors and need help. What's the situation? I have brigades amassing among along placid echo call and little toothed crossings. The vendoring guard may be able to hold one bridge, but they cannot hold against a concerted three prong attack. I have no right to give orders, but her words falter, a short cuff breaking her flow. But we all die to Kairos' Chiros, edict should we fail, so I'm not about to let my pride blind me with the value of good help. Uh, this is the second major attack on the river, correct? What happened last time? Defeat in detail. We carved a bloody path up the river, but at that point, everyone who charged ahead was lost. We had no chorus backup. There was just a few disfavored squads. I can't tell you exactly how they were defeated, but we lost the whole assault team. She shakes her head, letting out a long, pained sigh. We found bodies washing up in the river for days. It's not often a tearsman put up such a good fight. It certainly made us reevaluate the number we'll need to take uh, this valley. Really? Are you sure our scouts didn't give you all sorts of details about the enemy and you just chose to disregard our warnings? Uh, I'm pretty sure they would have, you know, taken such advice. Why not? Well, we don't know what happened, so I'm going to say stay neutral here. We can pass out blame after the war. Only the Oathbreakers matter now. Quite right. Getting our emotions into the mix won't hasten this campaign. Um, so, did his favorite need my help? Trying to pour salt on my pride? We left Fort Resolution with a hundred on hundred and there have been no reinforcements or reserves. I keep throwing warriors back into battle before they're properly rested. So yes, I need to rely on all our allies. Especially since most of our allies are conscripted tearsmen. Worse than useless. If the disfavored didn't take every opportunity to insult the Scarlet Chorus, perhaps you'd find our help more forthcoming. Shut your snout, filthy mongrel. I won't suffer childish japes in my camp. Yeah, that's fair. Well, I mean, everybody's mocking everyone, so... She has a point. The disfavored constantly mocked the Scarlet Chorus. Do this favorite have history, pedigree, proper training, all the, all the things these southern conscripts lack? We didn't train for decades to be peers and equals of these traitor tearsmen. We've lived lives of dedication to Kairos, and the chorus accepts any fickle coward too fearful to die by their convictions. What you're seeing here is this favored bigotry as its finest. I'm somewhat at fault because my country wasn't conquered before I was born. Forget that I chose Kairos. Forget I chose the Scarlet Chorus. Forget that I chose to fight off rapists and killers to earn my place in the army. Just for the favor to call me a worthless turncoat to my face. No one gave me a suit of armor that I could hide behind. No one issued me a sword and a measure of authority. I took everything that I have and I fight every day to keep it. Fucking northern swine. <laughs> That's some good damn dialogue. <laughs> My frustration was aimed at those in the chorus who accept Kairos lightly. The disfavored commander withdraws a half pace. 
like loyalty or some shifting breeze like like loyalty or some shifting breeze okay so what's my help worth to you what's it worth Arachnios takes a half step back placing her arms on her sides you read the edict we don't take ascension hall it's your sorry hide too do you need a bribe to care about your own survival Turn to leave. Sorry to waste your time. Clearly the Scarlet Chorus is in greater need for help. No. Um, I guess I'll assist because I want to do the side quest. But it's interesting that you can do this, let's say. Sorry, that's my phone <laughs> making noise close by. Not sure if you even heard that, but it's distracting to me. <laughs> um... So I'm not sure like if this will mean that I can only pick one of these two scenarios or if it's, you know, I can pick both anyway. I, I just don't see how this works for now, um, but I will assist. Then our plan just might work. The Iron Marshal lifts her gauntlet close to her face, shifting her eyes from you to the metal articulations. We're loath to work with those who do not share our training and our values, but we know that Tunon the Adjudicator selects only the most capable minds for his court, and I trust you will honor us all on the battlefield. Antio will be leading the charge at Echo Call Crossing. Assisting you will be Barrack of the Stone Shields. She points to a heavily armored soldier standing sentry at the edge of the training field. Before you ask, no, the Forgebound weren't sloshes on Dappleseed when they fitted his armor. He survived the full force of the Edict of Storm, and his armor doesn't exactly come off. <laughs> Tactically, it's quite brilliant, but otherwise, it's something of a curse. Tapping her helmet twice, and Rania signals to the hulking presence. Beric, come meet the Fate Binder. The soldier that steps up to you better resembles an amalgamation of rusted blades and mismatched pieces of armor fused into a vaguely human shape. He reeks of sweat, feces, and whatever oil treatment keeps him flexible. <laughs> Jesus. Fate Binder, the Iron Marshal has tasked me with keeping you alive, and I have no intention of disappointing her. That should be enough assurance for anyone. Not silently. Beric returns your nod, silent, save for the creaking articulation in his alloyed carapace. Beric, is that you under there? I had no idea you were in Vendrian's well. Fatebinder, do you know this walking anchor? Uh, just a minute, do you two know each other? Um, yeah, let's just go with that. No, oh, that is to say, yes. I'm already as familiar with this ironclad halfwit as I care to be. She regards Barrack with a mixed look. We don't have time to trade jabs today, Verse. After the siege, you can throw as many tantrums as you please. I suggest that we remain focused on the mission. No offense to the mission, but seeing you looking like a garbage heap and reeking of a mass grave is more amusing by far. Did you forget how to don your armor, or did Grave and Ash leave you out in the rain? Beric sighs, a frustrated growl, shaking his iron enclosure of a suit. Uh, I don't think we've been acquainted. It's challenging enough to experience battle from a courtroom, much less remember the faces of your cohorts. I wouldn't expect you to know me under these accursed blades of rust. And he bangs on this malformed chest armor for emphasis. The Fatebinder will be joining us for the push across the river. I figured an extra hand might help. And more importantly, if my worries come true and the chorus tries to impede the mission, we will have an observer from the court on our side. Better to work with the Honorable Binder than some chorus children. He nods to you, his armor creaking as he bends his neck. <laughs> I ask that Beric accompany you there to arbitrate the cooperation between his company and the Scarlet Chorus. Echo Call Crossing is now unlocked. Eric, you've been without a cohort since the last Battle of Stalwart. It's time we gave you a task more worthy than hauling wagons and leading training, of dr tra leading training drills. She plants her hands on her hip and speaks in clipped official terms. Ash has assigned you to the Fatebinder service. You are to assume this task is, on is ongoing until we find a m more permanent spot for you, which could very well mean the swiftly approaching end of this war. 
or when the Fate Binder dismisses you. Is that understood? Barrick regards the Iron Marshal in an oppressive silence. That's an order, Barrick. She shakes her head and sighs, returning her focus to you. He can be as stubborn as pulling a spire out of the earth, but he's a good soldier. So, seems like a party member. <laughs> um, no, I don't mind. He seems like he would be useful. I'm honored to have a member of the Iron Legion at my side. Excellent. I look forward to your success in the field. So, we're with three. I got it. That's cool. And on that note, I'm going to call this set here. Next time, we'll deal with the inventory, we'll talk to our party members, and we'll go explore these new mission locations that we have. Uh, very interesting set, and I'm looking forward to getting into the action next time. For now, I hope you guys enjoyed that, and I'll see you guys next time. See you, dudes.